G'day, it's Robbie again. In my last video, you would have seen me experimenting, playing around as usual. Um, and in that video, I uh, I tried to see how well a standard butane gun um, would go at melting uh, aluminium in a controlled environment. And uh, I previously used the gun to to melt a little bit of aluminium in a uh, sort of you know an open environment, just a little bowl, and I thought I'd give it a go using a technique I'd borrowed from the internet, where a guy used some pots. He didn't use them like I did. He uh, he lined them with refractory cement and all that. But I just used the standard old pot, garden pot, clay pot, and I just drilled a hole in the bottom, shoved the gun in it, and put a tin can full of aluminium inside of it and let it rip and it uh, it did a good job it melted in aluminium quick no problem at all didn't use a lot of gas and uh, it was a simple setup I had a lid on it but that didn't work because I didn't have a vent hole in even a lot of people have got back to me and said look you should have had a vent hole on the top so it looks like that's where I screwed up on that so um, I took, you know, with the lid off, it worked great anyway, but with the lid on, obviously, it would trap the heat in more. But the gun needs um, some airflow, and I had, with the lid on, even with the lid canted back, you know, sort of a third open, it still wasn't breathing very well, I didn't think so. Anyway, um, it was good. Flower pot design's okay. The only thing is that, of course, you really want the gun to be not too, not right up against the... Uh, the can, otherwise the flame pattern's sort of all wrong because the hottest part of your flame pattern is is out here somewhere, not right up here. So you really want to have the gun back a bit. And uh, the flare pot, of course, tapers down and it's really the wrong, not quite big enough. It did the job, but it could be better. So this time around, I'm going to not use a flare pot because the flare pot cracked and it's not really safe, I don't think. I don't like stuff that cracks like that. It, it could cause an accident. So, yep, flare pot, all right if you're sort of it on the ground I suppose but to be safe you want something a bit better so this time around I'm going to use a tin can which is a, is a hand cleaner tin but it basically is like a paint tin you know same size as a one of those what, four or five litre paint tins and I'm going to put a coffee tin inside of it the old international roast <laughs> for connoisseurs obviously so the international roast tin will go in there the coffee tin and I'm going to fill the gap with a mixture of perlite and cement. Well, I had the cement, but I never had the perlite. So I actually had to spend money, you know, it broke my heart, but I actually, actually had to spend money to buy something to do this. But it was only like 10 bucks, so I could stand that. I mean, if you've watched one of my videos, you would have figured out why now that I am a bit of a Scrooge, but, uh, you know, that's the way I was brought up. Money was tight. Okay, so we're going to have perlite and cement mix in there, and the ratio I'm going to use is going to be uh, five or six of perlite to one of cement. Apparently, that's okay from what I read on the um, construction sites. And uh, I'll uh, lift the tin up off the bottom with some little bolts or something. I'll, you know, do something to keep it up so I can have the the mix going around the sides and under the bottom as well and of course I'll have to cut a hole through both tins for a, a pipe to go through for a removable pipe so that I can uh, after the stuff's set I'll just yank it out and we'll have a hole for the gun to go through so yeah that's the plan so that should be nice and safe you know uh, thicker stronger I don't want anything it's enormous, you know, I want something I can just use, you know, without having to get the sack truck out to wheel it around the place, you know, I don't want anything massive. Just something that I can melt down a tin full of aluminium in just for small stuff. And this should be good. So, um, lots of other people have made something similar on the internet, so, um, yep. This is going to be my variation on it, we'll just see how well it works. So, if you want to watch, hang in there. <laughs> Well, that saved a lot of hard work. That's pretty cool. Look at that. So now we've got the can in the can. So you can see it's going to be pretty neat. It's going to be good.
bloody light stuff, so leave one EB in just to uh, they'll hold, but won't be over strong. They're only there just to keep it off the off the base. Not a very good drill, but anyway, it's working. Cheap Chinese ship. Right, so. Hmm. Oh, baby, how's that? Perfecto. So, that, uh, that worked pretty well. So now it's a matter of uh, cut the hole, get some pipe that's going to be the same diameter as the nozzle on the uh, the burner, or slightly bigger, and uh, we'll cut the metal out on both the tins, feed the uh, the pipe in, and uh, then we can put the mix around, down and around and then uh, when it's set, pull the pipe out and we should be good to go. As usual I made a few changes. I wasn't happy with the, uh, the length of the screws. I wanted a bit more insulation in the bottom so I put longer ones in and uh, I've also put a bit of super glue on there just to uh, keep them a bit more rigid because um, it's only very light tin. So uh, I did mark the spot, but I'm not going to do it. I'm going to, having it longer, we lift it up slightly higher, but it will, uh, I have to square that up a bit, but it will um, put the burner down close to the bottom too and give it a thicker, a thicker amount of, of cement on the bottom. So that'll be better, I think. The market, you just bring it over the edge and uh, just run the texture pin around in there. Well, we got there in the end. The uh, that's how it's going to be, and uh, it's just a matter of now put the cement and the perlite mix in and let it set. And uh, yeah, see how she goes. Looks good, I'm happier, it's got more insulation in the bottom and also the pipe is coming out closer to the bottom which is, I think that'd be a pretty well ideal spot so anyway, that's what we're going with so hope for the best Punched a little hole in the bottom of the tin so that any excess moisture can drip out into the into the tin so uh, um, that way it won't get any sort of wet patches in the bottom of the in the bottom of the thing so uh, I'll just let it dry now and then we'll try it. While the cement perlite mix is hardening I might as well get on with the the lid to keep the heat in. I'm just going to use this the painting lid for now and just see how she goes. Um, I've got the perlite mix out on the back of the ute um, in the sun probably take a couple of days to harden I think and we're getting some good warm weather which will help we're suddenly good we'll be in the 30s pretty soon now um, the diameter I've had comments that it should be the hole in the lid should be two to three times the diameter of the of the burner hole well the burner hole is 32 mil so 64 mil is you know quite a big hole so I think I'll go over 64 uh, just go twice as big for now. We can always go bigger if it doesn't sort of work properly. So I've cut a hole on this at 64mm uh, diameter and uh, get it ready to use.
Oh, well, that turned out pretty good. I was originally going to use the um, carbide burr, and I would have done it, but it wouldn't have done as neat a job as this. So uh, I thought, oh, I'll stick it in the lathe and see if I can uh, grip it enough to uh, to cut it out with a single point cutter. So I just used a little carbide cutter on it. Did a good job. Very neat. Oh, well, there you go. Hmm, how yeah, neat's that, eh? Pretty good. So, yeah, I'm keen to see how this is going to work. So here we can see the inside of the, of the tin. This is the coffee tin. Here's the port, and my finger's coming in. And the gun is shooting straight in. So now here's the standard old baked bean tin that I used last time, and, it, and the gun handled that easily. So you can see you've got quite a bit of space between the whoops, between the tin and the coffee tin for the flame pattern to spread out around that. So I think that'll work fine. I don't think you need any swirl effect for that. However, if you go to the fruit tin size, the next, next one up, the gun's going to be too close. So in fact, I think this tin is, yeah, you could come in on an angle like that and shoot it around the edge. So I think you'd need to use swirl effect for this size tin, but whether that tin is too big for the gun, it could well be. I mean, the gun is, I don't think, that powerful compared to, say, one of those dedicated burners that people make up. So we'll see. I'll try it out. This is, I mean, this is really all I want to melt down. You know, a full tin of aluminium like that would be plenty for what I would expect to do, and I think that that would be okay. So... Anyway, that's the plan. We'll give it uh, a fire up and uh, we'll see how it goes. Well, they, the burner needs some refining because that gun can't be uh, put right in the pot. It has to be kept back so you can get more airflow around the nozzle. So it really wants a, a bigger hole in the bottom of the can, a bigger diameter hole, and that way you can then rest the gun in it and it can draw air in from the bottom. It's not, it's not getting enough air in from the bottom to, uh, to burn properly. So next step is to open that hole out bigger and uh, I think we're going to get a better result I think it's uh, it's choking at the moment uh, even with the lid off uh, it wasn't what wasn't burning correctly so anyway we'll push on okay so I've modified it I've put a 45 mil internal diameter pipe in and it comes through you can see inside the container and uh, the gun tip is 25 mil, so that's pretty good. And I had it going, I tried it out, and it worked really, really well. Uh, keep the gun, just rest the gun there, and uh, the flame goes through, and that gives it plenty of length for the flame pattern, the flame path to fully build up and, and go out. And uh, 
Well, I had to grind all this out, of course, and uh, spin up a bit of pipe in the lathe, and uh, and now it's a matter of fastening it, and I'm going to just, uh, I mean, you could use some tabs and PK screws or something, but it's easier and quicker for me just to hard bronze it. I'll just hard bronze it around onto the outside of the tin with the bullfinch and uh, that'll be okay. The inside won't matter. The inside could eventually burn away on this, so if I ever did this again, I'd try and make it out of some really thicker steel. But anyway, this is a good, uh, for 10 bucks, it's going to be okay and it'll definitely work okay. It melted aluminium pronto, so next thing is to just uh, hard bronze that, uh, that bit of tubing. Well, there it is. Turned out okay. Just bronzed it up. I mean, it's a bit burnt because uh, bronzing does that, and it's probably not the prettiest bronzing job you've ever seen. But there was a gap between a small gap between the, uh, the tube and the uh, the can, and of course, unlike arc, where you can just fill it in with the bead. There's no bead as such. You use capillary, and uh, if the gap's too wide, bronze won't capillarate if it's open on both sides. If it's only open on the one side. It's okay, but uh, so I had to put a bit of wire. <clears throat> a bit of just cutting a wire in there as a filler and then bronze it so it's a little bit less than pretty shall we say but anyway it should be okay and uh, yeah should be good so we'll see how it turns out tomorrow when things cool down Well, that went without a hitch, and uh, on the second attempt, everything worked great. So let's just tip it out and see what we've got. Well, that's a pretty impressive piece of aluminium, and uh, it took about 10 minutes to melt that down. I could have put in as much again, I mean I could have filled that tin right up and it still would have melted it without a problem and uh, when you compare it to the tin, that's quite a big volume of aluminium out of an old jam tin. So there you go, uh, easy cheap way to get into metal casting, all you need is an old butane burner with the with the big tip on it and uh, you're in business. So there you go, I hope you found it interesting and uh, I'll see you next time. Cheers.